Welcome to Weekend Project. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mom and Pop Quilt Shop and we're very happy to see you here today. Today we're working on embroidery and maybe the few things you wanted to know about embroidery or machine embroidery to begin with. I have a Janome Horizon 15,000. I call him Nomi. This is his embroidery arm that came in a separate case and then you end up sliding it in here. So I just want to show you all how I get there. So there's been a few questions uh, that has been asked to me and I'm going to answer them the best that I can. So one is, what stabilizer should be used and does the weight of the material determine how heavy the stabilizer should be? Yes. You want to pick something that is like weight. So medium to light, if you got a, you know, if you're working on uh, say cottons and, and obviously lighter, lighter materials like rayons or um, shears and stuff like that. And then of course heavier for, for like towels and uh, denim, canvas, those sorts of things. Okay. So there are three different types of stabilizers for machining. There is cutaway, there is tear away, and there is wash away. Now, and then there's things that are also called toppers, which toppers is what you would like to use if you have something with a pile, um, a corduroy, um, suede, um, 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 velvet, that sort of thing. You want to, or towel, terry towel for embroidering, like uh, say uh, a towel or like a bathrobe or something like that. You want to make sure that you're stabilizing the bottom, but you're also stabilizing the top as well. It's just like a little plastic film that you lay over top and you don't, you don't put it within the hoop. You're not stabilizing it within the hoop. You're just kind of putting some, maybe some painter's tape on the far corners and then having it there because then it'll keep those stitches from getting lost down in that pile of material. Okay. Like say like the corduroy or something like that. Okay. Uh, what kind of threads can be used? Well, really any sort of thread, most uh, machines uh, prefer a poly. Um, a nice shine to it and uh, it just goes in the machine easier and they can stitch and take that friction of the needle going up and down next to each other of the threads and not breaking. Um, machine embroidery is definitely different than hand embroidery and of course hand embroidery is a, a glorious amounts of uh, materials that you can use for, for that. Um, I use uh, polyester on my machine 100% just because it's easy for me and, and, and my machine likes it. so. Uh, is there a specific weight that should be used? Most people uh, that I know of and have done some of the research, I just load a bobbin of the same color because then when they're stitching, you're not going to see anything different. Some people use a clear, some people use like a, 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 a mono polyfilament uh, or something maybe like a white or a gray or something like that. But I want to make sure that my color stays consistent, especially if I'm working with lighter colors. So I'll just load the bobbin as the same. So 40 weight, uh, sometimes 60 weight. I've, I've seen it where some people use 60, but I use 40. I just use the same as I'm using on the top as I am on the bottom and making sure that my stabilizer is as best as possible, okay? Um, and, that's the, uh, and then tips for loading. Okay, so we're going to do that right now. First, I'm going to get my arm on the machine, okay? Do -do 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 -do. And it just slides in. It's got a couple little dots. There's a dot here. Oops, one of my threads. Oops, I'll get you in a minute. There's a dot here and a dot here. So I need to make sure that those are lined up first. Okay. And then I slide it on. Okay. And it's just that easy. I shouldn't have done it with the uh, machine on, but that's okay. So move my scissors out of the way. And I got a little button at the side here that I pop it down and the whole arm gets extended out. Okay. So this is where my hoop gets attached is right here and then of course it moves uh, around underneath the machine okay so here is my hoop okay and here's some of the stabilizers I didn't have um, the iron on uh, stabilizer but I it's iron on steroid but I did find the little um, um, you know, sheet that goes with it and then I have some uh, water soluble uh, topping here, which you can use for the top and the bottom. And water soluble obviously means it's just going to disappear. Okay, so 
I have the stabilizer here. You can, of course, just cut a bit, whatever you need for your project to fit within your whole hoop. I suggest fitting the whole hoop because you want that nice and secure. I love to reuse bits and bobs, so that's what I will do here. My hoops, the big ones, all came with a little template that helps you know this is the stitch zone. So as, as much as the hoop is this big, really, it's only going to stitch what's really within that, that blue spot, okay? That's the best. And then, of course, there's holes to make sure that you are um, setting it up where you want it to, to, to go. You say you want a name on, uh, on a, a piece a cloth, okay? So let's, let's do that. Here's my little twister here. You gotta loosen it because you're gonna add a stabilizer. Hopefully it's big enough. Should be big enough, yep, 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 okay. And then, of course, our fabric. So, say here we want to, let's just do something random here. Grab a ruler so we have a line. Kind of go in the middle, right? And say we want to put, this is just a water soluble pen, okay? And maybe not just on a straight angle or a straight um, over there. Maybe we want to do a little bit on an angle. So, let's kind of, let's mark a, a spot there, okay? So, that's where we want to put a name, okay? I don't know whose name, but we'll put it in. <laughs> okay. So we want to make sure we're stitching on that line. Okay. So now we take our fabric. There's our stabilizer underneath, right? Because that's going to stabilize our fabric. Here is our hoop. Okay. And of course it fits down in there, just snug like that. And then we can line up our little template. You do not stitch with this on. You, this is just help to help you get to where you want to be and be happy with that position of where you want to be and then you take it off. That's why this little hole is here so it is easy peasy. You don't have to go poking through your already stabilized fabric to get it out, okay? So once that you have that there and you're happy with it and we're pretty sure that we can get our name where we want it on that little line there. I know it's faded. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll do it darker with a pencil so you can see it, okay? All right. But you know, you use something you wouldn't be able to see, unless you're going to stitch right over the whole thing. I mean, you could totally put whatever it is your name on there uh, um, and stitch it underneath. Okay. So now we take this and we take it over to the hoop. So, <laughs> uh, sorry, the hoop over to the machine. I apologize. And this is how it gets locked in. Okay. Little mechanism, just like that. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. So first, make sure everything is nice and secure. Take it and twist the little twist tie or twist knot. Make sure your fabric is all seated. Some of the bigger hoops have um, like a little magnet snap that you got little magnet strips around the inside and the outside of the hoops to help you keep your fabric in there nice and tight. So they're just kind of like little, 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 I don't know, I guess they're little magnet snaps. That's the only thing I can think about. Okay, so let's do, I have blue thread in the bottom. So let's put the blue thread at the top. Okay. Do, 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 do. Now, another question that came up is what happens if your machine runs out of bobbin thread mid stitch, like mid project? Okay, oops, turn this baby back on. Well, that, is, the machine will stop, okay? And then what you'll have to do is obviously remove your project by unhooking it from the hoop and being able to access the bottom space, a bobbin space, okay. I just wanna make sure this is under here. And then you'll pop your bobbin out, load it up with more thread, put it back in, move your project back to where it needed to be because it's, it's, it's hooked in, it's hooked in. You're hooking it in, right? So let's move this up, slip our project underneath. We're gonna change to embroidery because it's gonna move up the way, okay, there's the arm, make sure it's uh, going where you want it to go first. So that's its home position, okay? So once we get this hoop in here and then locked into place, uh, hold on, oh, there we go, okay, make sure it is in there before you actually twist it. Now, what, what, what should happen is when I go down with my needle, I should be as right close to that spot as possible. Okay. Uh, resume last pattern. No. Okay. Make 
see that's in there, right? It is, okay. So that should come down right to that hole, okay? Just like that. So that you know where it is in center wise. So when you go to pick your, um, what hoop you're using, because that'll give you the space on your um, machine and what you're working with. So I wanna go back here to pick my hoop and it's the SQ14, and then it gives me my space right there, exactly that looks just like this little grid is on my little computer screen right there. And then from there, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna take my um, alphabet, and we're just gonna say do script, and we'll capitalize, oops, and of course you can do small, medium, or large. So let's do medium, okay. Okay. It's SQ14, yes. But I wanted to place this uh, on its machine. Like I wanna be able to place it, not just where it's gonna stitch right in the center, right? So I wanna go back uh, da, da, da. Oh. Um. What am I thinking here? No, so key that'll put you there. It'll put you for the center if you want to go for the center. It tells you where it is. Um, it's barely been a minute since I used this last. Hold on a second here. Mm. I want to place it. So this consists of 1,300 stitches. Um, no, I don't want to switch to ordinary. Okay, sorry, I had, had to go back to where it was for, for selecting the um, uh, hoop, okay? So on my screen here is, it says the, the name, okay? And then I can move it to drag it where I want it on my screen. I can also tilt it on degrees of 45 every tick. So if I want to make sure it's gonna go on that line, oops or close to thereof, and I can take it and I can drag it and put it up just a little bit and know within reference of the cross lines on my screen and the cross lines on my project that the things will be the same, okay? And I can also at this point in time increase this or decrease this font by 20% either direction via this screen here too. And if I don't like what I got going on, I can just hit the garbage button, okay? So I can go by 45 degrees or, or I can go by every one degree to make sure that I got it where I wanted it, okay? So I take this out. Uh, hold on. I'm gonna try and see if I got to where I wanted to go. Um, nope, I need to go there. Okay, all right. Now it should stitch pretty much over that, fingers crossed. And then hit start. Oh. Okay, keep hands clear, all right, and start. Yes. Now I let it start a couple stitches, and then I come in and clip. And then hopefully those stitches will get lost, okay? And as to what happens, you, you just reset it all back up for when you, the, the, your bobbin runs out. I try to make sure um, that there is, if you're especially working on a really big project, you want a couple of bobbins loaded uh, for that project. Like when I was stitching out um, um, stockings, I used either red or black, mostly red, so I'd load up like four bobbins of red and then do, you know, a bunch of stockings with their, with their names on and stuff like that. 
Okay, see, I got pretty good placement on that of where I wanted it. It is covering it. And it does take time. You gotta be patient. I put a brand new fresh needle, embroidery needle in. Embroidery needles are a little bit different. They have a bigger eye in the needle and helps with the friction of the threads being up against each other and the needle going up and down. So uh, they have a less tendency to break. That's another reason why I like the poly, okay? Nice bright green thread. Now, so if you want to do this as a t-shirt, uh, just adding some, maybe something to a backpack, um, you know, a bag or something like that, it's definitely possible to, uh, to set it where you want it with, with, the, with the right machine. And if you didn't stabilize this, what it is is there's so many punctures of the needle and the thread, it kind of pulls things all together like it's, it gets all puckered. So your, say your once was an, an eight inch block, now becomes a, like a seven inch block because everything is condensed because it's pulling more and more and more and more material into trying to stabilize around it. So stabilizers are amazing. I wouldn't try to stitch without it. Um, if you had um, like uh, maybe a interfacing or something like that, maybe an iron-on interfacing, you could probably use that as a backup. Definitely. Beautiful, beautiful colors. And then, you know, the, and then poly um, embroidery thread comes in every single color you could possibly think of. So if you're looking for something specific, you can do it. Or if you have a logo color, you can, you can do it. Here's hoping I answered at least some questions. And um, if you've always wanted an embroidery machine, I've had um, this Janome Horizon 15,000 for since since December of 2015. So uh, six years, six years going on seven years now. There'll be seven years coming up uh, at the end of this year, and I love it. I love it, love it, love it. I have no regrets spending the extra money on it or at all. It has helped me with my business as well as making personalized items for people that I care about and love. And um, yeah, I would suggest if you can, and if you, if you need to pool in a couple years gifts for some and say, hey, listen, I really would like one of these machines. So, you know, put, put me on the list. I'd, I'd really like one. They're, they're fun. And you can do more than just names. You can do from cartoon characters to some, some, time, some have apps where you can take a picture of a child's drawing and it will change that into an embroidery pattern. So you can make a small like Christmas ornament or something like that of a kid's drawing of that year for them. You know, I don't know, there's many ideas. All right, so now that it's finished stitching all the way out, we take, and take from the hoop, pull it out, okay. And then at the back, we can see how it's all stabilized. None of the fabric is, is puckered at all in, in any way. It's, it is stabilized. So this is easy stuff. It just tears away like, like nobody's business. Yet the stabilizer underneath the thread will stay there to stabilize it. So it will handle washes, okay? And you can see here that only a couple little spots where it was dense that it would do that, but it would do that no matter what, whether you were a shirt or otherwise. So there's like bowling shirts, golf shirts, uh, golf bag, you name it, things for the kids, things for yourself. Go ahead and go ahead and do it. Do it, do it and have some fun. So, all right, I think that's, I think that, that's good for now. <laughs> uh, we may do another one of these videos if we get more questions and I'm happy to do my very best to answer them. Um, Thank you very much. Um, please leave a comment at the at the bottom if you want to, and don't forget to give a thumbs up if you like the this episode. And if you're not already a subscriber, please hit the little subscribe button, and notification, so you don't miss a video. All right. Take care, everybody. Thank you very much, and you enjoy your day.